I haven't posted for a few days because Mrs. Disgruntled and I went away for the long weekend. We went away for Easter. No, sorry, not Easter. We went away for the Day of Transgender Visibility, which happened to fall on Easter Sunday. And as much as I think the vast majority of the trans community are just trying to live their lives, do they really need any more bloody visibility? The reason that day falls at the end of March this year on Easter Sunday is that it isn't too close to the Day of Trans Remembrance or Transgender Awareness Month. So this is the founder of the Transgender Day of Visibility, and I think we can all agree she looks a delicate feminine flower. Of course, if you were in England, you wouldn't have known it was Easter Sunday either, because the Mayor of London, Sadiq Khan, and the leader of the opposition, Sir Keir Starmer, couldn't stop banging on that it was also Ramadan. So despite Britain being a Christian country and Easter Sunday being one of the two most important days in the Christian calendar, we had to make sure that the followers of the religion of peace didn't feel left out. The religion of peace. The one which the terrorists come from. In my opinion. I'm not stating that as fact. Anyway, the point is that the wife and I travelled home yesterday on a bank holiday Monday and there is no greater woe. The journey to the hotel a few days beforehand, I won't say how far it is because then someone could calculate my average speed, but bear in mind this is my car. I drive a bright red Audi turbo diesel. That tells you all you need to know. That I travel like I'm fucking qualifying. The trip out took an hour and a half. The trip home on the bank holiday Monday, three fucking hours. There were a number of reasons for the delays. Firstly, it's a bank holiday. There's always going to be more traffic. Secondly, if you're watching from outside the UK, in Britain, we drive on the left of the road. Sorry, in Britain, we drive on what's left of the roads. There are potholes everywhere, and not potholes that will give you a puncture, these are potholes that will snap an alloy wheel. Which is remarkable given how heavily British motorists are taxed. A number of years ago, I was in Florida and speaking to an American woman about the price of petrol. I told her what we pay for a litre. She thought I meant per gallon. The way which roads are repaired in the UK is different to the rest of the world. Most countries would employ road workers skilled people who know how to repair tarmac. In the UK, we get men to come out in lorries and cone off entire roads, creating diversions which are always wonderfully inconvenient. And thank God for the English Channel, otherwise those fuckers would be diverting us around mainland Europe. Then when that's done, we don't get road workers. We call the Jedi. Or at least I think that's who they employ. Because in most countries, you'd expect to see people using earth-moving equipment, diggers, or even just shovels and spades. But in the UK, we have large groups of men who just stare at the pothole, occasionally pointing at it. So I've deduced they're trying to fix the road using the force. Another thing we have with roadworks in the UK are the average speed checks. But they aren't really average speed checks because yesterday I was sat motionless for 20 minutes in a 50 mile an hour average speed zone. So by rights, once the traffic cleared, I should have been allowed to do at least five minutes going 130. Another thing that um, doesn't get mentioned often is that if you're on a smart motorway in the UK, if there is anything whatsoever up on the gantry, that turns on all the speed cameras which is a nice little money spinner. Yet, the biggest cause of congestion, as I was trying to drive along the M6, and every British person who heard the name of that road just shuddered because it is hell on earth. The biggest issue was these bastards. It's a bank holiday weekend, so all the caravanners are out. And I have no idea what they enjoy about dragging their caravan along a congested road. I can only assume misery loves company. I've been on one caravan holiday back when I was two years old. And I think even at that age, I realized it wasn't for me. And if you're watching this in the UK and you are a caravanist, please explain the enjoyment to me. Because from where I'm standing, to be a caravanner, 
first of all, you have to have a large, expensive car, like a Range Rover or a big BMW, which the second you attach a tow bar to absolutely wipes out its second-hand value because no one wants a car that's been towing. And if you can't afford one of them, you need something really hateful, like a Kia Sedona, a car that you have to drive every day of the year, just so for a few weekends you can attach your fiberglass monstrosity to the back and piss off every other motorist. And isn't a caravan basically just a really crap version of your own home? Now, the wife and I, we always stay in hotels and people will say, oh, it's more expensive than camping. But is it really? Because we didn't have to buy the hotel. People have to buy a caravan. They need to keep it roadworthy. If they don't have a big garden, they need to pay for somewhere to store it. And here's the thing. A hotel will usually be in a good location, not just the middle of a sodding field. And in our hotel suite at the weekend, there was a table and a sofa and a bed. We didn't need to combine anything to make somewhere to sleep. Also, in every hotel, I've noticed, there's always the cuck chair, isn't there? That one single chair facing the bed. Presumably for men who like to watch their wife getting fucked by other guys. I guess that having your own things in a caravan is an advantage, because the thing I don't like about hotels is none of my stuff is there. Also, the TV isn't like it is at home. It's not on demand. In fact, the only on demand TV you can get in most hotels is pornography. Now, firstly, if you've got Wi-Fi, why would you pay for it? And secondly, do you want to check out of the hotel knowing that the receptionist knows that last night you had a damn good wank? Another thing I really like about hotels is that if I get hungry, I can go downstairs and there's a restaurant. And yes, I have to pay for someone to cook for me, but I'm on fucking holiday. I don't feel like working. And I'd rather spend money than spend nine hours desperately trying to cook a chicken over a poxy little gas stove. And the gas bottle, that lives in the caravan. Personally, I don't like to sleep in the same room as a potential bomb. And when it comes to basic hygiene, yes, in a hotel room, there's that weird thing that you're not allowed to smoke or vape in the room, but you can come on pretty much anything. But when it comes to, say, the shower, it's cleaned every day, and it's only the wife and I that are using it. Whereas in a caravan, you either use the internal shower, which to me never look like they've got much power in them, so can you really get yourself clean? Or you have to go to the campsite showers and share them with all the weirdos and perverts with their verrucas and diarrhoea, because obviously they ran out of gas before the chicken was properly cooked. And when it comes to the toilet, again, a hotel room has plumbing. I flush the chain and my turds disappear. I don't have to wait for them to be dissolved in chemicals like some bizarre science experiment or wait for the toilet to fill up so I can slop it out like I'm living in an 18th century prison. Is there something sadomasochistic about being a caravaner? Because often these are nice middle-class people. They give £10 a month to a charity that gives people in Africa running water, but at the weekend they choose to go somewhere where they don't have it themselves. What is it with Brian and Deirdre hooking up their Bedouin Rome Master 4000 to the back of their Sanyon Rexton? Is it just going out on the roads to make everyone else as miserable as they are? What pleasure is there in getting 12 miles to the gallon whilst burning out the clutch on your car? And I can tell you where traffic jams happen on bank holiday weekends. Anywhere where there's a very slight incline. Because caravanists, despite their flappy wing mirrors and excellent parking skills, they cannot regulate the speed of their car. If there's a slight slope upwards, they slow down a little. So someone behind them has to tap their brake, and this has a knock-on effect, so that 20 minutes later, in the same spot, there's now a five-mile tailback, and I'm sat there with my fucking handbrake on. So if you're watching this, and you're a British man considering buying your first caravan, I implore you, pay a dominatrix to tie you to the bed and stamp on your bollocks. Because not only will it save you a vast amount of money, we all know that's what you're really into. Rather than just complain, I offer a solution. I would only allow caravans on the road between 11pm and 5am and 10am and 2pm. So they're not on the road when all the normal people are trying to travel. 
mostly to and from work, but I realise I'm talking about a bank holiday. But I think they'd be okay with it because caravanners, they're more than happy to spend an hour and a half in a lay-by waiting for a kettle to boil so they can have a cup of coffee rather than pulling into a services and just fucking buying one. Although that being said, the average motorway services now, to get a coffee which will always be a soy, dairy-free fuckachino, costs about seven quid from a barista who insists on telling you that they're pansexual and use they-them pronouns. Of course, there is worse than caravanning, and that, of course, is camping. I don't get that at all. For me, the only people who should spend time in tents are the army, Boy Scouts, Native Americans and refugees. And of course, in the UK, if you're a refugee, well, firstly, you're not a refugee, you're an economic migrant. Secondly, you won't be in a tent for long because the government will put you in a hotel which I can't afford to stay in. That was a very ranty one. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. And as ever, thanks for watching. Because the wife and I went to a bucket. Sorry, not Easter. Transgender awareness knows not fucking. Yeah, that we desire that which we see regularly. If that was the case, after two hours on the M6, I would have been fucking the back out of that Skoda. I told her the price of fuel per litre. She thought I meant a gallon. Although I have to say, my American friends, you are catching us up. Weekend to uh, Lancaster. And then we're going to go for a. Well, it's not even fucking relevant. Wait, but you can jizz on anything. Never take a UV light into a hotel room. Where the traffic jams are going a bit. Testicles.